Hello everybody and welcome to Talladega Super Speedway as we continue on the Shell Pennzoil race weekend here at the High Bank Super Speedway that has brought about many a great finish already here in this weekend which is the next to last weekend until championship race weekend comes to us here in the NSRA at Zenjoltis. We have here a 41 car field in Division 2 of the Mobile One Cup Series ready to take this racetrack. And in our Division 1 race, it was Jacob Rodriguez, a championship contender, going to victory lane, picking up his first Mobile One Cup Series victory of Season 3. Will today end up playing into the hands of maybe Tony Speed, Jake Baskinger, Sean Galligan, or Dylan Poteet, who are all looking for their first Mobile One Cup Series win of Season 3 and find themselves in the hunt for the championship in the Mobile One Cup Series as well. We're going to have to see just exactly who it is that's going to be able to survive Talladega Super Speedway. Doesn't seem like a lot of these drivers have been able to. We're going to have to see who's going to be the driver to stand tall here amongst all the rest at the end of these 29 laps. Danny Wells will be on the pole for this race in the 70 car, looking to go to victory lane for the second time this season in the Mobile One Cup Series. Same deal for Ryan Juke, one back at quarter slammer. He's going to start on the outside of the front row in the number 74. Then you got Jacob Cook making his debut into the Mobile One Cup Series in the American Ethanol Chevrolet, number 51. And alongside him, that's where you find Richard Johnson, who is trying to go to victory lane this season for the second time in his career. Our first championship contender is going to start up in the 6th position. That's going to be Tony Speed in the 43. And then you got Dylan Poteet back there. He's going, to re he's going to start this race off in 10th place. Everybody else starting from about mid-pack all the way to the back of the pack. I see Jake Basketer back there about mid-pack. And then I can't even see Sean Galligan back there at all. So I don't know where he's going to start this race off. But we're going to find out in just a moment. These cars are going to file past and... As they do after they are finished filing past, we will show you the starting lineup for today's race at Talladega Super Speedway. Who's going to be able to win this thing? I see Matthew Rodriguez actually back there about mid-pack as well, just ahead of Baskinger. Let's not forget, Roush Fenway Racing's got a victory here. Wait a minute. Oh, Cole Daly. What happened to Cole Daly? Cole Daly's car is stalled, the number 36, and now he's on pit road. Everybody else is going to be able to continue on, but Cole Daly finds problems here already at Talladega Super Speedway. What a tough break there. And I think we're getting word that Sean Galligan's starting off dead last or else right near the back of the pack. But Cole Daly has troubles to start off the Shell Pennzoil 300 version 1. Tough break for him. Let's show you the starting lineup for today's race, though. about it for one Cole Daly is the fact that he was going to start off this race in position number seven and now he won't even make it to the green flag hopefully it's maybe just a mechanical problem they'll be able to get him back out on the racetrack but just a tough way to start off this race for Cole Daly in that number 36 team we're getting ready to go to green flag race and this going green is brought to you by the Mr. Stop Motion 88's YouTube channel home to the NSRA Stop Motion series and much more Check out his channel and subscribe today. I believe he's also got the Walmart IndyCar series going on over there as well. So you can check out the Mr. Stop Motion 88. But we thank you for checking out this race here as we're getting ready to go green flag racing here in the Shell Pennzoil 300 version 2. Danny Wells, Ryan Juke, Jacob Cook is going to get us underway as here we go. Green flag is out. Danny Wells will lead us down into turn number one. They're three wide already. Tony Speed going up way to the high side. Whoa, and Matthew Rodriguez gets turned. He collects the, the uh, Allen Tanker machine, and the caution's out already. Didn't take them long at all. Oh, there they are. Oh, man. There's John Worry involved. Pichu London's got a piece of it. Oh, and they're wrecking up here. Oh, man. Dylan Young's involved. Jason Michaels in his first start in the, eight, the 85 car. Sean Gallagher got a piece of it. Leah Walker got a piece of it in the 55, making her debut in the Mobile One Cup Series. There's Red Bell involved, Anthony McCurry, 
Joseph Clark making his debut. He's involved. Adam Rose is involved. Who's that? That's Jake Rogers. There's championship contender Matthew Rodriguez right there in the 60. He was involved. He's the car I saw get turned. Ben Ward gets a piece of it. Another championship contender and Zach Carlson is involved. Barney Ward is involved. Joseph Bryant, heavy front end damage to his car. Bill Raymond possibly in it. Wolfgang Mason's in it. Jake Baskinger's in it. Alex Tanker was in it. Alan Tanker was in it. Oh my gosh, there were a lot of cars. Oh, there's Mark Gillette making his debut in the Mobile One Cup Series. He's involved. Aaron Williams, right side damage to his car. Has Ryan Juke got a piece of that? Yes, he did. Ryan Juke was involved. My goodness, was this one whole wreck or was this several wrecks occurring? Don't know, but Danny Wells leads us under the caution flag. Let's look at a replay. That's a lot of cars involved, and just about every championship contender in this field got involved in an incident one way or another, with maybe the possible exception of Tony Speed. Let's look back at a replay. Well, right here is what's called a commentator's nightmare. You see Baskinger, Matthew Rodriguez, they get together. Down they come. Racetrack, as you see, there's the 46 of Ben Ward getting turned around. Alan Tanker just gets clipped. Red Bell, Adam Rose, Dylan Young, Mark Gillette, Leah Walker. Just try and find yourself, see if you get through. I've documented basically everybody that was involved, but I'm going to keep my eye on the Aspen Dental Toyota Camry. Does he get through? Nope. Runs straight into the back of Joseph Bryant. So there's Sean Galligan involved. There's Jake Baskinger. There's Zach Carlson. There's Matthew Rodriguez right there. That's four of the six championship contenders involved. The only two that I think did get through everything were Dylan Poteet and Tony Speed. As a lot of debut drivers, Joseph Clark, Mark Gillette, getting involved in this incident here. Tough break for them. As a matter of fact, Matthew Rodriguez, or not Matthew Rodriguez, sorry, Mark Gillette actually flipped over. That's a rude awakening, a rude welcoming to the Mobile One Cup Series. Oh, there's Jason Collard in the 66. He was involved as well in his Mobile One Cup Series debut. Number 66, 5 Hour Energy Toyota. Dylan Young involved. Red Bell involved. Jason Michaels in the 85 making his debut. Adam Rose. Barney Ward. This just It's just, just about everybody who was running from about 16th on back involved in this incident in one way or another. Who knows, we may end up finishing up this race with about 20 cars of the original 40 to finish off this thing. You never know, I mean, this, that's a lot of damaged race cars here. But we're under the caution flag nonetheless. I apologize for that glitch. I want to thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for your patience and uh, for continuing on watching this race with us. As uh, this has certainly turned into a wreck fest right from the get-go... There you see Cole Daly. He's returned to the racetrack. He is currently listed at this point, I believe, only one lap down to the leaders. That is indeed the case. He's currently in 20th place. Only 19 cars still on the racetrack. These are the cars out of the race. Alex Tanker, 21st. Bar Barney Warden, 22nd. 23rd, Wolfgang Mason, 24th. Joseph Bryan, Dylan Young, 25th. 26th, Red Bell. Joseph Clark in 27th. John Worry, 28th. Leah Walker, 29th. Anthony McCurry, 30th. Matthew Rodriguez, championship contender, will get credit for 31st. Ben Ward, 32nd. Adam Rose, 33rd. Another championship contender in Zach Carlson will be 34th. Mark Gillette will be 35th. 36th will be Jason Michaels. Then it's uh, Jason Collard in 37th. Kenny McCurry will be 38th. Jake Rogers, 39th. 40th will be Pichu London. And Sean Galligan will get credited for 41st, dead last for that championship contender. But we have a championship contender up front. That's Jacob Lawler in the 39. He'll be the leader. Second will be John Castle with Richard Johnson third. Danny Wells, the pole sitter, back to fourth after pit stops. Then you got Dylan Poteet in fifth. William Duncan sixth. Seventh, Jake Cole. Eighth is Ralph Mason. Ninth on the Pratt. And Jacob Cook is in tenth. Eleventh place is Ken Johnson with Alan Tanker in twelfth. Thirteenth is going to be David Burton with Callum Wales. Fourteenth, fifteenth, Tony Speed. Jake Baskinger is sixteenth. 17th, Aaron Williams. Uh, 18th place could be Ryan Juke. And 19th is Bill Raymond. We've only got three championship contenders left on the racetrack. They are Dylan Pote, Tony Speed, and Jake Baskinger. All of the championship contenders, Sean Galligan, Matthew Rodriguez, and Zach Carlson are out of this event. Oh, Jacob Lawler also on the racetrack here. I, I failed to mention the 39. He's the leader, actually. How could I forget that? 
As we go green flag racing, going to be interesting to see if Cole Daly can maybe get his car back on the lead lap. He only fell one lap down to the leaders. If he could get a quick caution and be out in front of the leaders at the stripe, he would automatically be back on the tail end of the lead lap. Right now, he is up to speed with the leaders. It was a mechanical problem that failed to get his engine to start. And that's the reason that he ended up not being able to, able to take the green flag before he was called to his pit stall. Comes Danny Wells making a three-wide move. Also making a move. That's going to be John Castle to the inside in the 97 car. We know just how strong these Fords run here with Jacob Rodriguez's victory in the Division 1 race. We got two of them battling for the lead there. As a matter of fact, one of them was, uh, yeah, 39. Whoa, Dylan Poteet gets turned straight into Cole Daly, and the caution's out again. Oh, and Poteet must have saved it, but I don't think Cole Daly did. Where's Daly's car? There it is. Daly gets spun out after contact with Dylan Poteet. Caution waves once more. Let's look back at a replay of what happened. Looks like the contact's going to happen right there between Dylan Poteet and Jake Cole. Down the racetrack, Poteet gets turned and straight into Cole Daly. And watch how Dylan Poteet's able to get his car righted. I don't think that car even went up and scraped the outside retaining wall. If it did, it was awfully close. Jake Cole actually getting a little bit of Cole Daly there. So I guess you could call it a three-car incident. But the car that was left spinning through the tri-oval was the 36 of Cole Daly. A lap car who was up to speed with the field but finds even more trouble here as he becomes the second caution of the day. Well, we'll get ready to go back to green flag racing now on lap 11 of 29. We do not have anybody, I don't believe, retired after that incident. Nope, Cole Daly's going to remain one lap down as they got repairs done to his race car, and he'll pull on to the inside line, the only car one lap down. Here's the way the lineup now is. The field certainly got shuffled up after that. Richard Johnson now has inherited the lead. John Castle is going to be second. William Duncan's up to third now with Ralph Mason fourth. And Jacob Lawler has slipped now back to fifth. Donald Pratt is in sixth. Ken Johnson seventh. Jacob Cook will be eighth. Ninth will be Alan Tanker with David Burton in tenth. Eleventh is Callum Wales. Twelfth, Aaron Williams. Dylan Poteet is now back to thirteenth. Tony Speed, fourteenth. Fifteenth is Jake Cole. Jake Baskinger is 16th, 17th place is Ryan Juke, 18th Bill Raymond, and Danny Wells, the pole sitter, back right now, last car on the lead lap in 19th place. 20th, one lap down, that's Cole Daly, as there are 20 cars still on the racetrack, 19 on the lead lap. If you're just joining us, all the other drivers out, for the most part, due to a huge wreck that occurred on the very first lap, starting from about 15th place on back, just about everybody from... 15th on back was involved in one way or another. Several drivers retired from the race, including three championship contenders, Sean Galligan, Zach Carlson, and Matthew Rodriguez. We still have four championship contenders in this field. Jacob Lawler, the highest starting of them. He'll restart in fifth. Also in this race, we got Dylan Poteet still there, Baskinger, and Tony Speed. So we'll keep an eye still on those four. So here we go, ready to go back to green flag racing. Now, Cole Daly was involved in that last incident, so I can't say whether or not he would be up to speed now with these drivers or not. Going to have to see if he still has an opportunity to race his way back onto the tail end of the lead lap after being the second caution of the day just mere moments ago. Green flag comes out. Cole Daly receives no drafting help, so Richard Johnson, with the drafting help up high, will clear Cole Daly, probably coming down here into turn one. He will indeed. Cole Daly now starting to get some drafting help. He's going to battle back to the inside. Cole Daly trying to get back on the tail of the lead lap. He's got William Duncan and Ralph Mason helping him. Richard Johnson's got John Castle up high, but the inside line looks like it may prevail. Cole Daly with a lot of help. He's got to hope now for a quick caution here on the back straightaway, possibly. That could get him to the line first and get him back on the tail end of the lead lap. And there it is! Dunn LaPrade gets spun by Ken Johnson right in front of Alan Tanker. And there goes Richard Johnson around! With John Castle and William Duncan. Oh, and Danny Wells is spun! 
Cautious. Oh, Tony Speed just nailed Richard Johnson. Ken Johnson's around. Callan Wales is around. Is Cole Daly going to get back to the line first? Ralph Mason's right behind him. Daly's got to remain ahead. Cole Daly's going to get himself back on the tail end of the lead lap as there were about four or five different spin outs from turn the, or the exit of back straightaway right into turn number four. And it's Cole Daly back on the lead lap with Ralph Mason, the leader, under the caution. But my word. There's what's left of Dunn LaPrasse machine. Tony Speed, championship contender. His day is done after he flipped over that car. Richard Johnson. Alan Tanker's involved. Ryan Juke is involved. Danny Wells spun out, I saw there. My goodness. Ken Johnson, I saw get spun out. I saw Callum Wales spin out. John Castle got involved in that wreck with Richard Johnson. And this field just keeps on getting smaller and smaller and smaller as this race goes on. Let's look back at a replay of this, our latest caution. Well, here's a look at what exactly happened here. The contact may end up coming between himself and Ralph Mason. Oh no, Jacob Cook hooks Ken Johnson in the right rear and it spins him up into Dunlaprad. The Pride was running in 6th place at the time right there. And watch Alan Tanker. Just know where he can go. Everybody's dispersing left and right. And oh, Alan Tanker nowhere to go. And oh, then David Burton gets shoved up into Dylan Poteet and Tony Speed. So that's how that incident went down. There you see Poteet, David Burton getting together. Further up here, Richard Johnson gets spun out with William Duncan making contact. And then watch Callum Wales. Oh, I think I just missed him. There's Callum Wales, Ken Johnson, but there's Tony Speed. Oh, Ryan Juke and then Tony Speed, both involved right there. Danny Wells spun up into Jacob Cook. And then watch Callum Wales up here, along with Ken Johnson. Those two cars snap loose, and Baskinger nearly runs in the back of Ken Johnson. Absolute utter chaos here on lap 11. And Ralph Mason ends up inheriting the lead because of it. But there's another championship contender gone in Tony Speed. And Dylan Poteet will have to see what the damage is on the 38th. Another championship contender involved there in Dylan Poteet. So, my goodness, this, this race is just absolutely crazy. It's insane the way these drivers are racing here. And are we even halfway in this event? No, we're not. How many drivers are going to make it even to halfway? I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going back to the green flag right now. The green flag will wave on lap 16 of 29. That will give us a total of 14 laps to go. Drivers out after this incident include Richard Johnson, Don LaPrade, Tony Speed, Ryan Juke. And also, we're getting word that Jake Baskinger has fallen a lap down to the leaders. A championship contender right there in his own right. Let's see if he is... Oh no, Baskinger is actually retired from this race. So, don't know what it was that caused Baskinger to leave this race early. But, he'll get credited for 16th place. That leaves us 15 cars left to battle it out. Cole Daly has raced his way back onto the tail... Or, back onto the lead lap. What a comeback for him. After the mechanical problems that happened to him before the green flag even dropped. Let's show you these 15 drivers who will battle it out here for the possible win here today. Ralph Mason is the leader. Aaron Williams is in second. Jacob Lawler third. William, or make that Callum Wales is in fourth. And William Duncan is in fifth. Jake Cole is sixth. Seventh, Bill Raymond. Eighth is Jacob Cook. Ninth is Cole Daly. Now inside the top ten after just getting back on the tail of the lead lap. And the top ten is rounded out by Dylan Pote. Then you got Alan Tanker in 11th. Danny Wells, 12th, John Castle, 13th, Ken Johnson, 14th, and David Burton is the last car on the racetrack in 15th place. Well, right now, it seems like the two drivers that are going to benefit, as far as points are concerned here, in the Mobile One Cup Series chase for the championship would be Jacob Lawler, who starts off 3rd, Dylan Poteet, who starts off 10th. 16th place, that's where Baskinger will finish. Not a bad finish, but certainly could have been a lot better for the 31 Siemens team. As here we go. We're going to get the green flag here on lap 16. You would think 
you would think that with 15 race cars left on the racetrack that they somehow would be able to make it back to the checkered flag without having another yellow, but the way they have been racing, I would not bank on that. Here we go. Ralph Mason's going to lead him into turn one, battle on for second. Jacob Lawler down low, side by side with Aaron Williams. Battle for third is side by side between William Duncan and Callum Wales. Top five have broken away, then single file back there. Jake Cole and Jacob Cook, Cole Daly, and Dylan Pote. Then Danny Wells, John Castle, and David Burton begin to lose some ground along with Bill Raymond, Ken Johnson, and Alan Tanker. They're going to go three wide for the lead. Can Duncan get it there? No, not quite. Ralph Mason throws the block, and he'll keep the 50 car in his rearview mirror as he now uses the 50 of William Duncan as a drafting partner to get by Jacob Lawler coming here out of turn number four. Because William Duncan, though, he's not giving up. Coming back to the inside line is the 50 car. But where's his drafting help going to come from? Callum Wales, I think, is too far away. But William Duncan's going to try and make it work on his own. Three wide at the line. The leader that time by a splitter was Ralph Mason. Second place was, I believe, Jacob Lawler. Then third was William Duncan. But now, coming here out of turn number two, William Duncan has a car, car length advantage. And William Duncan is going to be the leader coming down the back straightaway. Look who's coming up through the field here. None other than Cole Daly, who at the drop of the green flag was sitting idle on pit road due to a mechanical problem. Cole Daly raced his way back onto the tail end of the lead lap after our last caution came out. He's now up here inside the top ten. How would it be? What a comeback story it would be. Whoa, as Aaron Williams nearly turned William Duncan. If Cole Daly could come back from it all and pick up his first... Well, no, it was actually, it would be his second Mobile One Cup Series victory. He's got one that came at Daytona, so he knows how to win a restricted play track. But how would it be if he came back and won his second Mobile One Cup Series victory here tonight, or here today, at Talladega Super Speedway? Right now, looks like the only championship contender right now that's doing anything is Jacob Lawler. But Dylan Pote, he's trying to catch back up here to the tail end of this pack. To be able to pick up some spots here. As he currently runs. I believe that is currently the 8th position. That Poteet is sitting in. Look at the crossover move. Right down the back straight for Aaron Williams. Can he get to the inside? No. William Duncan able to move down 3 grooves. And throw the block right there. Into the entrance of turn number 3. But the Pepsi Next Chevrolet. Looking for his second win of the season. He won 2 weeks ago in Indianapolis. He wants to visit Victory Lane one more time here. As he's all over the back bumper. Of William Duncan. Jacob Cook. What a debut for Jacob Cook. In that 51 car, only driver basically that's making his debut that's even been up here survived basically for this whole race is the number 51. I believe he started off this race, I believe it might have been in third place for the 51, either third or fifth. And he's up here now in the fourth position. But let's not forget, Jacob Cook has quite a bit of experience, he's got a ride over in the uh, Oreo Truck Series. So Jacob Cook's not wanting for experience, he's pretty doggone good experience. But just not with these mobile one cars. And right now he's showing it the experience factor right there. And his being able to survive so far. And be up here inside the top 10 at this point. Comes Aaron Williams. He's going to try one more time. He's tried several times. Been unsuccessful. This time he has gotten to the inside line. And it's going to be Aaron Williams going to the front. With the help of Ralph Mason down low. Aaron Williams going to lead a lap here at Talladega Super Speedway. Of course, for Aaron Williams, not only does he want to win his second Mobile One Cup Series victory in three weeks, but he also would love to get some experience heading into the Snickers Cup Series race where he is a championship contender. He's going to lead them down the back straightaway here. As a matter of fact, very interesting seeing here uh, two drivers that are in the hunt for the Snickers Cup Series Championship. Aaron Williams at the head of this pack and Dylan Poteet at the back of this pack. Will it come down between these two at the stripe here? And if so, how will that apply into their Division 3 race in the Snickers Cup Series when it comes out? Both of them in the same division in the Snickers Cup Series. As now, here comes William Duncan with Cole Daly down low. No drafting help for Aaron Williams. Ralph Mason starting to fall off the back bumper of the Pepsi Next Chevrolet. And William Duncan becomes the new leader once again here at Talladega Super Speedway. Cole Daly going to move into second place, being the pusher. And oh, there goes Aaron Williams spinning. Aaron Williams spins down and off the back straightaway. Ralph Mason is involved as well. 
and I think they both kept it off the inside retaining wall. There's Williams, there's Mason, but was that enough to bring out the caution, perhaps? Let's see. No, no caution for the spinning Ralph Mason and Aaron Williams. Don't know what it was that caused that incident. We'll have to look back at a replay as here comes Cole Daly down to the inside. And how about this? From back to front for Cole Daly, he's going for the lead. But Jacob Lawler instead is going to help the drafting up high with William Duncan. And Duncan is going to be able to throw the block and keep the lead heading down here into turns one and two. Let's take a look now. Let's stop and look at a replay. See what exactly happened to Aaron Williams and Ralph Mason. They spun off turn two and down this concrete infield on the back straightaway. As William Duncan continues to lead Cole Daly second. Then the rest of the top five. Jacob Lawler, Callum Wales, and Dylan Poteet with about ten laps to go. Okay, here's a look at what exactly happened. Looks like maybe Aaron Williams and Ralph Mason are going to get together coming off of turn two here. Let's watch them coming off turn two. Mason's about a half groove lower beneath the 73. Yeah, just gets into the left rear quarter panel, and both of them kind of go bouncing off of the 51 of Jacob Cook. So a tough break there for the American Ethanol Chevrolet. So he got a piece of it, and Williams sliding towards the inside wall. Oh, he did get a piece of it. He got a piece of the first one and then a piece of the second one. He hit the first one with the right or with the left rear. And then he hit the second one with the left front. And Ralph Mason also spun out. As a matter of fact, almost looks like some gray smoke coming out of the number 93. Don't know if there may be something going on inside the 93 car, but both those cars spun down off the back straight off turn two down into the back straightaway. Williams got a piece of the inside retaining wall. Jacob Cook, we know, also got a piece of it. Let's go back. They're getting ready to race it here for the final laps here in the Shell Pennzoil 300 version 2. Lap 25 was just put on the board. We've got six laps remaining in this event. Actually, now make it five laps to go. It is still the top five the way we left them. Duncan, Daly, Lawler, Wales, and Poteet. As now Jacob Lawler looks to the inside line on the Cole Daly machine. We're seeing these two championship contenders when Jacob Lawler and Dylan Poteet, the lone two to survive this wreck-filled Talladega race up here now inside the top five with a good opportunity here to put themselves in good position for next week at the season finale at Zenjoltis. Almost thought I saw a slower car up ahead. I may have not. But, oh, look at Daly. Oh, we almost had some help there with Jacob Lawler. But now they're going to split three wide coming down here to the stripe. Daly could have made that outside line work if he had had the drafting help of Lawler. Now he the, uh, recruits the 39. Nope, 39 is going to ditch him again and go down to the inside line. So Cole Daly is going to get freight train now. Now the Cajun, number 39 Ford Mustang, pulls up to the back bumper of the 50 car. There is a slower car up ahead. I think it may be Bill Raymond. We'll have to see if these cars are going to have to deal with him before this race is over. Remember, it was a lap car in Division 1 that nearly played out into who won that race, but it was Jake Rodriguez able to recover and win that event. William Duncan back with Cole Daly. Cole Daly and William Duncan seem to have a little bit of an alliance going on here. They've been working together, as have Callum Wales and Dylan Poteet. Those two have worked really well together to catch back up to these guys, and we may not have heard the last of either of those drivers. As here we go. We're going to get the... Lo the uh, signal of three laps remaining oh we got a few slower cars up ahead danny wells alan tanker and who is that that's uh bill raymond how they're gonna pass these guys look out look out guys look out oh they're coming up on them with such speed as they dive down to the inside raymond i think they're gonna clear him but jacob lawler's getting held up behind him everybody else is getting by except for jacob lawler Oh, and Bill Raymond is going to try and block Callum Wales. Cannot do it. Callum Wales got to the inside, and he'll make the pass there. But he did lose third place to Dylan Poteet. So now it's William Duncan, Cole Daly, Poteet up to third, Wiles fourth, and Jacob Lawler still has left to deal with those lap cars. He's still boxed in there. He's boxed behind Danny Wells, Alan Tanker, and Bill Raymond, who are now three wide for position. Jacob Lawler's just boxed in there. He's not going to be able to be a contender for the win now. 
Two laps to go. William Duncan, Cole Daly, then about four car lengths back to Dylan Poteet, then about a six car length advantage he holds over Callum Wales. Callum's got to catch back up to Dylan Poteet for those two to catch back up here and be contenders for the win. But how about this? How about Cole Daly? you got to be impressed with the tenacity of that number 36 team. Never gave up. Got that car back out. He fell a lap down. The caution came out. He got ahead of the leader at the stripe, which was Ralph Mason at the time, got back on the tail of the lead lap, restarted on the lead lap in 11th place, and now, up here 28 laps later, he is battling for the win with William Duncan, but we may have not seen the last of Dylan Poteet, or maybe not even Callum Wales, he could catch up to this, as here we go, it may become a three or four man fight to the finish, white flag will come out this time, William Duncan looking for what could be his first NSRA victory of his career in his first of the World One Cup Series. Cole Daly looking for his second Mobile One Cup Series victory. Dylan Poteet looking for his first Mobile One Cup Series victory and to become the second driver in the NSRA in Season 3 to hold a victory in all three series. He went to victory lane in Snickers, went to victory lane in Oreo, but is still yet to be to victory lane in the Mobile One Cup Series. And how about Callum Wales, who's had such a dismal season in the Mobile One Cup Series? Could he make some drastic move here? Here we go. Out of turn four, Cole Daly's trying to dial up the high side. The only way he's probably going to be able to make a pass. But could he put a slingshot move here? Out of turn four, he loses about a car length of ground. He's trying to close back up, but it's going to be William Duncan. Single file down to the start-finish line. They come. No drafting hell for Cole Daly. He'll have to settle for runner-up. William Duncan wins his first NSRA victory of his career at Talladega. A super speedway unbelievable race what a finish and you just have to admire the 36 team coming away with a second place finish but great job by william duncan as well that team's been waiting been longing been yearning for their first nsra victory and they finally get it here today at Talladega Super Speedway. Dylan Pote, kudos to him. A great finish in third place for a championship contender. Then Callum Wales, that's going to be his best career finish in that 40 car. In the fourth position, and Jacob Lawler got held up behind those lap cars there with about four to go. He will still finish in the top five, though, in the fifth position. Unbelievable race. Unbelievable. William Duncan actually didn't even start the season in the 50 car. Came in as a fill-in driver after Hiroshi Kato was released from his contract in that 50 team. And he now finally gets to victory lane here for the first time in his NSA career. What a well-earned victory for William Duncan. Certainly this is going to shake up the points as here's where your championship contenders finished off this race. Dylan Poteet third. Jacob Lawler finished the day in fourth. Jake Baskinger finished in 16th place. Tony Speed credited for 19th. And then you've got the cars of, uh, let's see, Matthew Rodriguez in 31st, Zach Carlson in 34th, and Sean Galligan finished the day in dead last. Well, certainly it's going to be a point shakeup. Hope that you enjoyed this race. Here comes the official finish order and the standings. The drivers highlighted in red in the chase standings are still mathematically able to compete next week at San Joltis for the championship. Those not highlighted in red have mathematically been eliminated from championship competition. We thank you for joining us here at Talladega. Hope you'll join us for the three divisions of the Snickers Cup Series, which will be coming your way very soon. The Shell Pennzoil Race Weekend continues here at Talladega Super Speedway, as William Duncan picks up his first career NSRA victory. You've been watching the NSRA Offline Racing at its best.
Hey guys, thanks for watching another NNSCRA race. I really enjoy bringing them to you. Hey, give me a like down underneath this video if you enjoyed what you saw. I'd really appreciate that. And also, remember it is essential that you comment at least once every week if it's a race that you're in in order to keep your NNSCRA ride. Also, if you're not subscribed to me already, I wish you would subscribe to me so that way you know when each NNSCRA race comes out on YouTube. Want to get some inside information on what's going on in the NSRA? Check us out on our official website at nnsraracingseries.weebly.com. And also, it's back. NNSRA is back on Twitter at NNSRA Sports. You can also check us out there. If you're not sure how to get there, you can access it via my channel. You can either click on the little Twitter logo or the NSRA official website link right below it. Also, you want to be able to get some more site information, check out my second channel called NNSRA Vlog where I post videos about stuff that's going on in the NSRA, stuff that's going on behind the scenes, and also some extra stuff as well. Not sure how to get there? Go to my channel, check out NSRA members list, and it's at the very top of the list. That's basically it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching this race. I enjoy bringing it to you. It's courtesy of NSRA, offline racing at its best.